This afternoon I moved on to my good replacement fuel tank. So this is the uh, factory original fuel screen from 1986. As you saw it was uh, pretty reasonable which goes hand in hand with the condition of the inside of the tank. I'm very pleased with it actually. Way better than the uh, crap that came out of this car. Um, this is the new screen filter. I have uh, lubed the o-ring um, just so it snugs up nice and easily. I don't actually have a socket big enough for that. I just used a 15 inch adjustable wrench. Um, so obviously I have to change it while the tank is out or I'll have to buy a socket to do it later. Um, this is more a case of just getting this tank out of my shed because I'm sick of it being in there. I'm not connecting up the bottom yet because I still have to rebuild the rear suspension. Um, to get it back in, the uh, neck goes in first on this angle and then you slide it in. But I did make a mistake. I didn't pay attention to the uh, drain hose from the fuel filler area and it got trapped below the uh, rear tab like this. Nonetheless, it's easy enough to fix. You just have to pull it back and slip the hose around. I did need two hands for that, so I couldn't show you. And this is the uh, tank seated in position. It just needs the uh, nuts screwed on. And obviously the electrical connector for the fuel level sender. And these are the uh, custom made uh, four nuts with the large washer that is captive to the nut. Um, so once they're tightened up, I plugged in the uh, fuel sender and routed the cable correctly. And it was just a case of taking off my protective uh, shirt over the uh, filler so it wasn't scratching the hole. I did have an aerosol can cap on the end of that so no rubbish from the rag would get inside the tank. Uh, I wasn't able to show that because it came off with the rag but you can see it there I guess. And that fuel neck you can actually uh, manhandle it a bit to make it more central in the hole. I did do that uh, off video. That's the cap by the way. And the uh, grommet that goes around the fuel neck um, I just lubricated that with the uh, silicon grease. Um, this stuff just makes rubber so much more cooperative. Um, I was able to get this to go in with one hand while holding the camera. And I'm pretty sure you'd have no chance of doing that with one hand normally. And you can see that I have straightened out the neck. Unfortunately, I lost concentration with the camera, so you can't really see what I'm doing, but yeah, I got the grommet on um, very easily with one hand. And that's it popped on now. And that's uh, so slippery, you can still spin it by hand. And that's the cap that came with the tank. Um, now it's time to install my sticker. I know that this is for the USA version, but I like the fact that it says premium unleaded because that's all I ever use. The Australian version cars only said unleaded only, not premium unleaded. Now I was for some reason under the impression that the rear lid seal was glued in place. Obviously this is a memory that's followed me from 116 ownership because they definitely are glued in on those. On the 124 it's simply pressed over the uh, sheet metal uh, lip there and you just press it down so there's no glue involved. So there was no excuse for me not to install my new seal which I did. And this is the part number for the late version seal that's used on this car. Um, what you need to do is slip it over the lid as you can see here and what you also want to do is make sure that the seam in the uh, seal is at the lock at the front so it's right in the middle at the front and then you just go and press it all around it's pretty easy 
and astonishingly, it's so much more spongy and firm than the worn out flat one on my grey car. This lid basically explodes open when you press the button on my grey car, nothing happens.